My name is Aaron Maniam. I'm a policymaker, a futurist, and a poet. I'm currently conducting a social experiment to see if and how we can become happier and more fulfilled at work. I have four volunteers undergoing a series of interventions, ranging from mentorship schemes to skill courses. Thank you so much. Don't forget to invite us. And I've only recently revealed to them the purpose of these interventions. These experiences are meant to help develop them into polymaths. People with one core expertise, supplemented by a broader range of additional skills. I feel it's important because you need to have a lot of other things that, you're, that makes you happy. So far, the interventions have pushed me into multiple skill sets, specifically getting me to do a lot of random talking, which I generally don't do, especially in front of crowds. I think young people will benefit from having a broad understanding. So even as a yoga teacher, understanding business, understanding accounts, understanding marketing, understanding social media, all of this will make it easier for me to function as a yoga teacher. Oh, I think there is value in being a polymath because if you go back and you look at all the, the greats, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, I mean, they all were polymaths, bringing technology and design together and creating products that change the world, essentially. Now that my profiles have an inkling of where the interventions are meant to take them, I'm going to crank up the process. Yes, yes, yes! Perfect! Yes. 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 <laughs> Over the last 10 weeks, my four volunteers have experienced a range of interventions. The latest involved bringing them back into classrooms, but for some brand new lessons. How can we understand their needs? How can we understand... Yoga teacher Sarah Manning got acquainted with the ins and outs of digital marketing. Welcome to this Skillshare video. In this Skillshare video, I want to show you five yoga postures. Fu Wei, who is trying to overhaul his family business, was sent for a business storytelling course with data scientist Raymond. I know bits and pieces of this, but I think the interesting thing for me was that I don't normally tie this into a business context. Singer-songwriter Abby Simone continued her internship with PR firm Rice Communication. So what to expect during the launch? and signed up for an online course on marketing. I didn't even know this existed, you know, and there's so many things that I need to know, like the structure, there's a systematic way of doing things, whether it's marketing, whether it's music, whether it's like a lot of things. I also nudged Fu Wei to take bolder steps in his effort to improve customer experience at his company's biggest sales event. So overall, how did the fair go? The sales was very, very good. The crowd was uh, fantastic. And uh, the best part is a lot of the things that we were trialing, you know, for the customers this year actually turned out to be very well received. Now, I want to take my four volunteers to the next phase for them to relook the way they interact with the space, time and people around them. We often hear people say that they want to work on a beach or want to work at home. Now what's all that really about? It's really about whether people can work in flexible conditions or not. For some people, that might mean flexible working hours. It might mean an open concept office. But for me, it means a lot more than that. It means how we work with the information that we have. It means how we organise our time. It's about how we deal with our interpersonal relationships. It's not just about the physical space. It's also about how we operate as people and how we communicate with the people around us. It's about the human space and not just the physical space. But how can we improve this human space around us? I decide to seek some answers of my own before I send my four volunteers on to the next round of interventions. I'm travelling to San Francisco to meet an old friend who can give me more insights. So it's a rainy morning here in the San Francisco Bay Area and I'm on my way to find Kevin Kelly. Kevin was the founding executive editor of Wired magazine. Wired is a magazine that looks at the interaction of technology and other trends and how those affect the nature of the work that we do. I think he's going to have some really interesting ideas, especially because he's a polymath. So Kevin, how would you define work? What other terms would you use? 
the very definition of that word work is something that has had a long history and is still evolving. Sometimes when we do things when it earns us money, we call that work, but that's actually not really, again, the best definition of it. Mm -hmm. So um, what we're seeing from technology and culture is that it's changing the environment and our own understanding of what it, what, what it is that we do with our time during the day. Mm -hmm. And so we still have what we think of as places of work, but I would like to kind of push back on the very nature of what it is that we mean by work and the other terms that we might come to use instead of work. Kevin, you're a bit of a polymath, right? You are a scientist, a technologist, you're a writer, you're a photographer. How can more of us bring all of ourselves to the work that we do as you do? Well, I'm, I'm lucky that I get to indulge in these different aspects. I don't even have a degree, you know, I'm, I'm a college dropout. And so um, I kind of circumvented the normal career path. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to kind of invent my own version of success. And that's actually what you want to do. Right. You, really want to, you really want to have seven billion different definitions of success. So our series involves four really interesting personalities. We've got a data scientist, an independent musician, the inheritor of a family business called Mother Care, which deals a lot in baby products, and a yoga instructress who's been out of the workforce for a while and was also trained as an engineer. What would your advice be to them in terms of creating their own space and forging their own narrative? Things are changing very fast. The kinds of abilities that we thought were important today, even in 10 years, will be a different set. And so each of these people, the best thing they can do is to get really good at learning because they're going to have to learn something new in the next 10 years. I think being a polymath is uh, the state of perpetual learning. So what can I do to help my volunteers become more adept at learning things? Things that will take them out of their comfort zone and set them thinking. I decide that a soft approach may be the most effective. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Hey, thanks for making time to see me. No problem. Good to meet you. This is such an amazing space. Yeah. It's purpose built for studying, okay. for, for education, yeah. Right. Why pottery? Sometimes it's important for us to learn from what we call the beginner mindset. The fact that we don't know very much and that we need to keep learning and making mistakes and learning from them and learning from feedback. You know, you know we've got this little social experiment going on yeah. and we're trying to test out different interventions with four different profiles. And what I'm wondering is, how does pottery make a difference to anyone's life? Because we think that an experience here could be really good for our four. I think part of our philosophy is really about how the hand, the heart and the head are together. Mm -hmm. When they are disconnected, then you're doing a very monotonous task. There's no feeling involved. Yeah. Do you think not enough of us use our hands and too many of us use our heads? Yeah, and we can tell from classes, you know, sometimes I hold their hands and I'm like, relax, relax, and I'm relaxing, and it's not <laughs> it's moving, not right. yeah, it's, it's so stiff. So a lot of people come in and they might have expectations, oh, I want to make a vase today, yeah. um, forgetting that they've never touched this material before. Mm. It's about letting go and believing that you know nothing, right. and then just, you know, being vulnerable to the material. And, learning from it, let, mm -hmm. let it speak to you. Right, but I am really interested to see what the you know, outcomes will be for this particular group. Mm, yeah, me too. I wanted them to learn from doing stuff they weren't good at, so not yoga, not running a business, not music, not data. Something utterly new. And pottery seemed like a good example of something that none of them was good at and that they could therefore learn about. I thought it was important that all four of them went through the process of being a beginner again. You can only get a celadon in a reduction firing because if it's oxidized, if you just let the oxygen roam in the atmosphere. So we are we're learning how to make pottery, and we're just going through the whole process. And it's my first time in a pottery class, so I'm really excited. I'm just like a kid. Electric kilns are very normal. Very I'm sort of very in the brain, and I'm not very into the hands. I guess the only thing I make is food. You can take your seat, choose any wheel you want to sit at. Yep, I'm definitely not a tactile person. I'm your usual keyboard warrior. Nice, we're just at an angle, slapping it down. And observe my elbows, they're on my thighs, so that I have stability. 
When I do that, there's counter pressure causing the clay to move upwards. As we gain height, we move even slower because the surface area to cover is even more. Get a straight, even cylinder first. Then you can do things like flare out the mouth if you like. I've seen everybody posting about pottery and I think to finally be here and learn the craft is really exciting. Just touch the clay while the wheel is spinning. You're feeling that water slide between your hands and the clay, yeah. so that's how it should feel. If you start to feel friction, that's when you add water. This is the first time that the four of us have met. We are very different in our backgrounds and our way of doing things. Just press it forward a bit. Yeah, but you still need to taper it a little bit more. So... I think with any craft, it's, it's easy in the sense that it's easy to learn how to do it, but to get really good at it, it just takes practice and repetition, more practice and repetition. What's happening is this wall is not sitting on the foundation, uh... right? Which means it's very risky now. At any point, it gets torn off. I'm definitely engaging some really random parts of my brain that normally does not get uh, get engaged. It's quite fun and interesting, and I do enjoy doing these kind of things. I did when I was young, play with faster scene. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Guys, this is art, okay? It's art. Anything is art. So what's happening is... I'm putting too much pressure. Yeah, on that. I know this about myself, but today was a confirmation that I do not like things to be perfect. Straight like that, and then going down this way. When Michelle told us that, you know, we needed it to be a certain way, I respected that. But there was that, you know, uh, naughtiness in me, that one, that rebelliousness that just wanted to make it a little bit more different. i would always known that about me, but today was like a confirmation that I'm always like that. Okay. So later when we expand, you'll find that part will be... I felt they were willing to just throw themselves in and make a mess. Uh, and that's kind of not what I'm used to. To be creative, I think you need to be a bigger risk taker. It was great to um, start to develop a relationship with some really nice people, some interesting people. Fuwei is a natural, it looks like. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that doing pottery actually kind of brings out your personality. For example, I think I'm, uh, I'm quite meticulous and you can see it through all of my actions. And for Raymond, right, I think Raymond likes to do things really quickly. So you, you can see in his actions as well. And uh, for Abby, she's quite quirky and quite a rebel. So she'll always be trying her own technique, whereas I'll be the complete opposite. I'll be following exactly what uh, Michelle has taught me. Oh, done. You can come back to my advanced class. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll bring my class. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Make sure your thumbs are on the oh, wheel hit. Well done. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi, Roger. Over the last 10 weeks, my four volunteers have experienced a range of interventions. They've received mentorship from others in different fields and attended classes to learn new skills. But this time round, I've decided to change the learning approach by getting them a dose of fun. <laughs> and pottery seemed like a good example of something that none of them was good at and that they could therefore learn about. The added advantage was that they could do this together, that they could learn and hopefully have a good laugh about it as a team and learn from each other in that whole process. How was the experience? Nerve-wracking. Nerve-wracking. Yeah. I think it helps that I, there's someone here to tell you at every step. I think if you're on your own, there might be different expectations. Like, oh, just play around. So part of nerve-wracking is maybe expectation. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, weigh up another 600 grams and practice. When it comes to work and people, right, we're kind of like the clay, right? It's our super clay shape. So we've already done it once, so there's no reason why we can't remember. Do I need to panic? Yeah. <laughs> panic! <laughs> we just had to dig deep into what we'd already done. Definitely difficult. I can tell that my motor skills are terrible. It's quite fun though, because I don't get to do the tactile things all the time. I'm not a sports person, so I don't like, you know, use my, my physical abilities that much. Do you think you guys will be okay if I step out and get coffee, five minutes. Yeah. No problem, okay? of course. So I would say when Michelle left, my mind went blank. 
I've forgotten. Make it a cone. Go up and down, up and down. Get all of them going. Ah, the uh, yes. Way. Okay. I also found that I was watching what the others were doing. I was asking them, hey guys, is this what I'm supposed to be doing next? So um, we became more dependent on each other. Instead of worrying whether she's going to come back and whether she's going to come to my help, uh, I just decided to do something anyway so that even if I fail or I succeed, something is happening. And if I fail, she's going to come. And if I succeed, then she's just going to look and be like, yeah, okay, continue doing it, right? What happened here? Why are there four lines? What I made when Michelle wasn't around was a complete disaster. But it's okay. You're not going to get every single information. You probably retain like 60% or 70% of it, but using that 60 and 70 and seeing what comes out of that and then continuing it after you get more help, that's even better than to just like sit there and, and feel like you're stranded. It'll probably the wheel was moving slow with your hands moving uh, fast. From a mechanical point of view, I have no clue what the feel, how it feels like to make one of these uh, pots. So I'm just trying to get the feel right and you know have a feeling of how, how things are supposed to work. If you want to make a base, you can continue lifting it. I know that's a bit high level, but I, I like flowers a lot. So if I have a vase, which I made yeah, in my house, that would be pretty cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. I don't, know, I don't, know, I don't know how to cut this, this part off, though. We probably don't want to expand this into a bowl because of the weakness in the centre. Do I feel I need to take more risks? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. You know, when you spent your whole life being playing it very safe, um, Maybe there's an opportunity there to really grow. And I think that's important. Wow. Sell it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that looks terrible. I would advise Abby, but then I feel like you know what you want to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know, actually. I think that was my most uh, happiest moment because I could do whatever I wanted with that clay. It was my playground. And it's not because I'm rebellious. I'm still keeping my hands the way she wants me to keep it. But I want it to be different because I want it to be mine. And the originality has to be there. The best way to learn is to play around. Then you see its limits and you understand, oh, this works, this doesn't work. Everyone seems to have enjoyed the pottery class. But I wonder if they found relevant applications for their day-to-day -day work. I think Mud Rock was a good reminder that Sometimes it requires a lot of discipline, patience and just time because the, the art of pottery and muscle memory and you know feeling the, the clay on your hand, like there's no shortcut to, to being good at it. It's really nice to just get my hands dirty with all this clay, you know, and then I think all these things that I've done have just reminded me that I'm Abigail and that's just it. Good. Done? Yes, you can call it done. Meanwhile, I'm catching up with Raymond to see how else I can push him. So Raymond, yeah. tell me how are things going? Uh, things are going okay. For now. Okay. Yes. How's the new job? Uh, it's actually quite interesting. I'm enjoying uh, basically being able to be uh, more, more strategic in a sense. Mm -hmm. So that now basically I, I actually have to think a bit about how we're going to use data, uh, business use cases for data rather than just uh, focusing on getting a job done. Okay. Yeah. You had some aims, right, going yeah. into this job present ideas and tell stories. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've already, actually already started doing quite a bit of that. Okay. Uh, especially to, because in order to, to formulate your objectives, in a sense, you need to tell a story. So mm -hmm. uh, in order to do that, basically, there's a narrative in a very wiggly sort of way. Hmm. Uh, and I'm kind of using those techniques to hopefully transmit across what is needed. Okay. Yeah. Raymond seems more comfortable communicating with others now. So I want to work on something else that I discovered at their pottery session. I'm definitely not a tactile person. I'm your usual keyboard warrior. I'm definitely engaging in some really random parts of my brain that normally does not get, uh, get engaged. I want my volunteers to think about reordering their headspace en route to becoming polymaths. Raymond, the data scientist, is used to giving his intellectual muscles a good workout. But I wonder if more physical activities will help him in different ways. So I'm sending him to Sarah for yoga classes. Have you done any yoga before? Yeah, Not right. quite a yoga fan, so... Okay, so this is a shock to the system. Yes, it will be. The good news is... Yes. You're going to spend time with me. That will be always awesome. The bad news might be that 
you are going to be spending four weeks with me. Yay. Yes, but it means that I have the opportunity to see how you go in your class, build knowledge that is appropriate, that will okay. help you. Okay. I want you to be bouncing out of this room like Tigger. I will keep that in mind. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think we should go. People are waiting. Yes, we should. Can I just have a show of hands? How many people have done yin before? Okay. Yin yoga is focused on connective tissue, ligaments, tendons, joints, and fascia. And I want you to turn your head. So Raymond spends a lot of time sitting at a desk all day. And I suspect that even in his spare time, he would choose to play computer games, possibly not in the best of postures. Raymond, he needs to move his body a bit. I'm going to invite you to have another cushion. I think you'll be more comfortable. As Raymond tackles his new weekly physical routine, okay, so you're a bit higher up. I've tasked singer-songwriter Abby Simone to revisit an old passion that's lapsed. And she'll be doing it for the benefit of others. I am currently at St Andrew's Nursing Home and I am here to just look at the place and get an inspiration of what I'm going to paint for them. My task for Abby is simple. St Andrew's Nursing Home needs a new mural on one of their walls and I want Abby to help them with that. I love going to galleries but I'm not a, such a good painter so I decided to one day just come home and, and do something you know like I, I really loved colours and I decided to put them all together and I realised that my work is what they call abstract. <laughs> so like that's how it all started. Will she rediscover her love for painting in the process? Will it lead her to other possibilities? Just like music, painting allows me to to be really free with what I want to do. I love the fact that I'm 100% in charge of this work and it's something that makes me really happy and doesn't matter if people accept it or not. Just like my music. So the idea that I have right now is a rainbow. You know, rainbows make us so happy, right? And it's like a, it's such a phenomenon in Singapore because it's so rare to see rainbows. With all these tasks, I want to see how I can help my volunteers find and create new spaces within themselves to become happier and more effective people. Being here today and, and being able to do something for them, it, even if it's one corner, like to just paint something, I think it's just really meaningful to just always remember to give back as much as you can, even if you don't have time to volunteer for them, you know? Like to just always come back and remember that I need to really savour all the good moments that I have right now. My name is Aaron Manya. I'm a poet, a policymaker, and a scholar. I'm currently pursuing a PhD in Oxford, studying how governments and societies can transform themselves with the use of technology. I'm also conducting a social experiment to see if we can become happier and more fulfilled by developing ourselves into polymaths, people with one core expertise, along with a broader range of additional skills. Just like Brian May of the rock band Queen, he's a songwriter, astrophysicist, and animal rights activist all at the same time. I hope you found that interesting and that's it. The four volunteers helping me with this experiment have gone through mentorship schemes and micro courses, interventions designed to help them develop into polymaths. But now, I want to focus on what it means to manage our space and time, beyond the notion of flexible work hours. I want my profiles to exercise more control over the concept of space, to allow different aspects of themselves to come forth. One of the things I've noticed is that data scientist Raymond Chan's life routine revolves too much around work and computers. So I paired him up with yoga teacher Sarah Manning. The idea is that by becoming more aware of the physical condition, he can unlock undiscovered abilities. Are you there? Can you stay there? You sort of. It's not a position I can hold. Where are you feeling this? In uh, basically my groin. In the groin yep. here. So it's too strong? Yeah. So okay. just push back. Push back a little. Push back, yeah. The foot is slightly further back than I would normally have it. But okay. if it's comfortable, I'm not worried. Okay. That might take some of the pressure out of the knee. 
yeah. but it might give you more pressure in the groin. So yeah. you have to decide yeah. where you want to compromise. Okay. Okay. The next posture is for those that want to feel the burn. You can't really hurt yourself, but it will burn. Well, I think the first session is a bit of a shock, especially if you've not done anything like it before. Feel into that deep sensation. Holding something for five minutes is just crazy. Blow the air out like you're blowing through a straw. I think those muscles just don't, don't, want, to, don't want to stretch. So, and yeah, it's just really weird for me. So, but it was good to, you know, try and get them to stretch a bit. Although it was just very embarrassing. But that's okay. Obviously, this was something very different for him. And he kind of opened his eyes in sheer astonishment at some of the things I was asking him to do. Raymond's looking like he needs to say exactly where he is. Yes, I'm definitely <laughs> I have to say, I had to look the other way because I was just grinning from ear to ear as he was struggling. I just couldn't bear to let him see that I was smiling because I could just see that he was in such agony. So the connective tissue in your ankle is really, really tight. Yeah. And that tells me that you don't do a lot of sport, possibly. No, no you don't do much running or... No. no. You've got to love it. You know, he jumped in there with an open heart and he hopefully felt safe to just have a go. And that's more important than anything else. I wanted him to feel that you just go to where you feel comfortable. I want you to bring your hands flat. OK. Yeah. Is that helping? No, I think mm. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I disliked any part of it, to be honest. I think more, all of it was quite good. I do like the stretching. I've been trying to do a bit more stretching on the side because I, I know I'm, I feel very stiff now. And draw your chest forwards. This stiffness affects me in a sense that it just annoys me during work. So doing a bit of stretching kind of helps with that. All right, everybody. It is time to slowly ease out. While Raymond soldiers on with his weekly lessons, I gather the rest of the troops to learn how companies are redefining the use of space in the work environment. Hello, Hi. I'm Cecily. Welcome to Salesforce Singapore. I was invited to be a part of this amazing excursion in Salesforce. Salesforce is consistently ranked as one of the world's most innovative companies. It was number three in the 2018 Forbes list, ahead of Tesla, Amazon and Netflix. They've also been voted one of the best companies to work for by Fortune magazine. How do they do it? As you can see, as you walk in, yeah. the feeling of our office is very homely. Well, when I first walked into the office, I was obviously very impressed. This space, you may think, it looks like a living room. Mm -hmm. And it's by design so that people come in, they feel comfortable and at ease and mm. very calming. And yeah, I was feeling a bit edgy when I arrived and I immediately feel comfortable when I walked in the, in, in, in the reception area, I have to say. A bit of fun and happiness into our workspace. So you can see we have some retro gaming important and uh, triple tennis if you want to play a bit of games in between. Um, and then there's our IT help there. So if you need help, our very, very good... Ah, that's um, where I correct. can spend my time. Exactly. For me, the most important resource that was there was having people on hand that can immediately handle your, your questions. Can I take him home with me too? <laughs> As you can see, it's very open. Wow. Maybe they should just change the colour of the walls, but if not, it's perfect for me. <sighs> very nice. Unlike other corporate offices where the executive get the corner office, mm -hmm. if you notice that uh, the staff actually get the maximum wow. sunlight here. The staff actually get the outside and the best space, you know, the view and everything. There's no corner offices and all the senior management actually are in the middle. So it's a very different concept altogether. You know, it's, 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 it's quite refreshing. I've, I've noticed all these Ohana seating signs around mm -hmm. the office. What does that mean? So Ohana is a Hawaiian word for family. Mm -hmm. So that really describes the culture of Salesforce, where we look after each other like family. It's really, really applicable to me because I'm, I'm in a family business and I'm in the business of family. So it's quite interesting for me to see how they have interpreted the term family. 
when you engage with your fellow employees in the same way as you would engage someone in your own family, it creates a very different kind of conversation. But if those conversations are held with the basis of trust and respect and openness, then it's amazing how a difficult conversation can turn into something positive. You provide so much for your staff here. The pantry, the games, the space. Do you guys just believe that as long as you can give, you will keep giving? The intent is to provide a space that people genuinely want to come to every day. But it's not just about the physical space, it's about the values. And when you create that environment, guess what? You get people's true authentic selves turning up to work. Because there's no fear, there's no intimidation. They don't feel like they need to act out a role. What that means is you got to give people a chance to voice out in a very safe environment. I think research have also shown that if an employee is being hurt, it's about five times more that they feel empowered to do great work. I resonate with what they're trying to accomplish and, and they've been remarkable in their ability to um, cascade these, these values within such a large organisation. I think a family is a nucleus of trust and that's something that they've really tried to bring in the Salesforce office. Um, actually, i got another question. Yeah. What are their working hours like? Yeah, we actually don't have uh, specific hours for staff, so pretty much they manage their own time. Do you get people just taking advantage of these things? These kind of things, we trust our staff, so they can choose. Hearing all of them say, uh, use the word trust, and being really consistent with that, that was something that I've not seen before, unless someone actually uh, makes a mistake and then we bring it up as a negative part, like, oh my god, I can't trust you anymore. That's always how we've heard it. Hey, so this is something that you probably find it very rarely seen in a corporate office. This is what we call a mindfulness room. This is designed as you like very calming, no cell phone, no talking, and just focus on your mind uh, and calm down. So we really believe that being mindful is part of wellness. Exactly. We're doing it already. <laughs> She's getting into the zone. Yeah. <laughs> now you have to sit down. Here. I guess that's it. We're yeah, all we're down. here. Hey, hey, you get some time off work. I get. <laughs> also, you see our picture of our, our CEO over there, uh, and uh, so he's a big believer. So it's basically a quiet space yeah, just to gather your thoughts. Space. Yeah. Mm. We do catch some staff come and make phone calls, which is not encouraged. <laughs> yes. I think it's wonderful that they have that space because that's what. That's what stepping off the, the rat race is about. So you step off, allow the subconscious mind to come forward, and that's where creativity happens. So I, I think we've taken quite a nice you know, walk around your entire office. What do you think uh, is the most important thing that we should be thinking about when we're planning our own office? I guess maybe you know, the Salesforce philosophy, we start with the employee, and it has to be a consistent experience so that it become part of the culture when they go to work. So mm. I think it's really, you know, rather than functions of what the office should be, they should be thinking about what the staff would want. After talking to the leaders of the organisation, actually I realised that, you know, the real estate really doesn't matter much. It's really about the people and uh, and the people are the ones who set the culture. Maybe there should be like an announcement, like a very nice, like, <laughs> In an attempt to help Raymond stretch some latent muscles, I signed him up for Sarah's yoga lessons. Raymond is halfway through this new regime, and I'm curious to see how much he has gained from it. So our trick is to... Hello! Really nice to see you! You too! It's good Hello. to see you guys! Good to see you too! Everything going well? Uh, yes, I guess. Good. Well, I heard this was happening and I thought mm -hmm. it would be fun to join in. You is are that okay? very welcome. Good. good. I'm yeah. so glad. We need to set you up with a, yep. a mat yes. or something. Yes. But, uh, you just that. Have, just have oh, the bolster, right. Okay, cool. Small. I think that... So Raymond, tell me yes. why are we here? Uh, I guess we're here, at least I'm here to do, to learn yoga. And how have you been finding it? It has been interesting. I found a lot of uh, muscles that I did not know exist mm. after I stretched them out. Yeah. But yes. I mean, a lot of this was basically you getting more in touch with your 
physical side, right? Yes, I have unfortunately gotten a lot more, you know, aware of my physical side or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. yeah. And why has that been important? Uh, I guess probably because I've been sitting around on my ass for too long and doing <laughs> <laughs> way too many intellectual things and not moving my body enough. Right. I guess this links a bit to what you wanted to do as a communicator, right? You think so? I guess it would help in some sense. Maybe, I don't know, makes you feel better. Because mm. communication positive. is a... Is a it's something you do as a whole human being, right? It's not just the brain that's communicating. You're communicating to people, which means you as a person has to have to do that. And I that guess that means getting in touch with your, your body yes. and the physical side of yourself as well. That makes sense, actually. So if you guys want to sit down, okay. I'd good. like to just talk a little bit about uh, what I'm planning to do today. I'm going to offer today some yoga alternatives that are going to be targeted at when you're feeling tired. He's a techie. He will want to understand why. Yeah. And I can do that because I'm a techie as well. So I'm here today to check in on how Raymond's doing. Uh, and in particular, I wanted to see how he's working on getting more in touch with his physical side. Shoulder comes across. Bring the side of your head and your shoulder to the floor. Lift one knee up. And here I am. Can be done, Raymond. Can be done. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she has done it. So um, whether I can do it is another question. In the past few weeks, I've realised that he's quite in his head. You know, he deals a lot with very analytical um, challenges and issues. And that's great. That's a very important side to develop. But I wanted to also see what he can do to get more in touch with his physical self and his emotions. Sweep wide and come back down. Hands down to the floor, chin is tucked. I wanted him to understand that to be a great communicator of data, to be the great kind of data champion and evangelist he wants to be, he actually will have to start dealing with his whole person, the mind, the body, and the heart. And the more he can do that, the more yoga can help him do that, the more effective I think he'll become. Yes, 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 uh, whoa. perfect! Yes! <laughs> you did it! I know now, what I want you to finish. Today's session, at least, uh, I think I'm getting better at the yoga bit. It's I'm slightly more comfortable with it, mm -hmm. but definitely during the first session, it was quite uh, quite a new experience for me. Let's put it this way. So I think I think now my body seems to be slightly more used to stuff, and the sun yoga stuff seems to be okay. Although it was still kind of weird positions, like the lunges. I don't like lunges. Right. So this is a very long journey. I don't think there are immediate results, or at least not results that are immediately obvious. And I think he's starting to see the initial um, point of what he's doing but the full benefits will only be realised over time. Meanwhile, Abby is about to get reacquainted with an old hobby. We are at St Andrew's Nursing Home. We are painting a mural. She's enlisted a friend she considers an expert to help her with the task. Jean is an amazing musician and on top of that, she's an artist as well. So. Basically, all I did was tell her my idea and she helped me translate it. I think we can start like yellow up to halfway about here. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll do it. What will she gather from this collaboration? Honestly, I, I love hiking and climbing mountains. Two years ago, I told myself that, okay, from now onwards, every country I go to, I have to climb a mountain, right? And every single time when, we cl when I climb, whether it's sunrise or sunset, I always see these colours. So to actually translate them on a mural is really, really beautiful. And then I think everything just flowed. Thank God I'm tall because he's perfect. <laughs> but I have one concern. Yes. Comfort a drip one. Then you don't take so much pain at one shot lah. <laughs> when Aaron got me to do this, okay. initially I was very, very excited. I was like, oh my God, I can paint. But then today as I was doing it, right, it, it's not easy. You know, whatever you do on paper, where your hand is on the book and you're just drawing like that. But when, when your hand is off the wall because you, you, know, you don't want to smudge anything and you just have to freestyle it, see now that is difficult. Do I use black to define it better or should I just use the yellow to define it better? That means this is like a shadow like... Yeah, huh? you should just use the, sh the yellow. Okay, okay. So the, my biggest takeaway from this would be to really just know how to work with people, especially people you care about. Oh, nice garden, ah. Hey, it's a garden, so much. It's a beast, ah.
one of our bee looks like a horse. <laughs> I don't know why Aaron wanted me to do this, but if I can assume, I think it's to never forget the littlest things. I, I love painting and I used to do it every single day when I was a kid. I used to draw and draw and draw and draw and draw and I, and I wasn't the greatest painter but it reminded me of so many things that I love to do and I haven't done and I should not forget it. And we're done. Yay. Yay. As Abby finds herself again with something old, I check in on Sarah to find out how she's coping with something new. Previously, I'd asked Sarah to upload a set of videos on the community sharing site Skillshare. And how are the videos going, the Skillshare videos? You know, people were saying, oh, you just, just have to record your videos. And, and to me, just recording videos was a major, major mental uh, challenge. Mm. We've recorded them. We now need to just upload them. Welcome to the Skillshare video on fertility yoga. <sighs> okay, so here I am. Um, it's now five o'clock. I've been here since 10 o'clock. I'm now ready to upload the videos. It's a process and I just have to jump the hoops. So, and it's obviously so easy for everybody that they don't bother to tell you how to do it. I can't, I don't know where, I mean, I'm going into my classes and it's just not there anymore. I'm sure I saved it as a draft, but how do I find it? Totally defeated. Luckily, Sarah remembers she has a new friend who can help. So, yes, I'm recording, and um, I have Raymond here holding onto my computer. Raymond and, and Sarah are very um, interesting. They're actually very mutually complementary. I think what Raymond needed was getting more in touch with his body, and Sarah does that for a living, right, with yoga. Over the past three weeks, Raymond has been attending Sarah's yoga class. They're scheduled for a final session today. But before that, Raymond helps Sarah out in a way he knows best. Oh, okay. Just went into edit. Are you going to it's ready to publish, right? I, I, I've decided it's ready to be published, yes. Published? Yes, we do. It's all ready for your new students to attend. <laughs> I'm exhausted. All right, um, I think we should do some yoga. Okay, awesome. <laughs> I'm going to switch this camera off and he's going to turn his camera on, OK? <laughs> You're game for anything, right? Almost anything within well-defined limits. Okay. Throughout these three weeks, I've put my four volunteers through interventions <laughs> aimed at helping them find new spaces within themselves that can possibly make them more fulfilled and more effective. Yes, I knew that! I wanted them to explore the concept of play rediscover hobbies they may have forgotten, and even stretch themselves a little more. Yes, perfect! Yes. The whole aim has been to help them rethink the idea of space when it comes to work, as well as to find that personal space that can help them grow even more into polymaths. Next, I hope they can put all that they have learned into practice in a final project that will involve all four of them working together. Oh, yeah.